Okay, thank you, everybody. Thank you for attending this evening. We really appreciate it. Yes, Salian, talk to me. Uh, good evening, all. Good evening, Salian. How are you? You all right? I'm all right. I just wanted to say um, thank you okay. so much. Um, yeah. I've been watching the... I passed my, my theory test. Oh, so great. Wonderful. I've been watching all the your videos, and, and it's really helped me. Okay, that's good. That's good. No, it's a pleasure. It's it's about it really is and it, it's about passing and and don't what I say to everybody is don't make it too big an issue but make it an issue of you have to study it you're not just going to get it for free you are going to have to practice and you are going to have to study it and you have to go from this point of where you're driving where you've learned the capacity to drive and that's natural. To the point where you start picking up the road craft and making that your own there is that boundary between the two for when you're ready for your test you're only ready for your test once you've mastered the road craft side of it by then you your, your driving should be natural if you think stop your foot just be, just be on the brake shouldn't even have to think put my foot on the brake but when you learn to drive in the beginning, you've got to think, put the clutch down or push the accelerator or turn the steering. You've got to think these things. But after a while, that all becomes natural and you just do it correctly. And you, you it becomes natural and becomes easier. And for some of us, it takes longer and it's easier for other people, but it, it it's just something you have to learn. It's a process. But yes, Salian. And if you've got any problems or you need help, you come and talk to us, okay? You come and tell us what you need help with and we'll make videos for it. We had one request for a video this week as well, which we'll be working on. And uh, I also realized that um, on the roadcraft videos, most of the, like the the parkings, um, it's done with an automatic car. Yes. Yeah, but it, it doesn't it doesn't matter uh, okay. it doesn't it doesn't matter what car you use you see the yeah. thing is what you always have to realize is a car has a natural geometry so so uh, a car is is very much like a geometrical thing and and once you turn the wheel to a certain point it can only turn at a certain rate now whether that's automatic or manual it's the same for everything and the transition from manual okay. to automatic is really easy. It doesn't take a person long to retire your left leg because that's really what you do. You retire your left leg and you take an element of additional work out of the actual driving. So it's it's not that difficult. But the, the processes are the same. The only way, the only place there is a difference in the process is in the preparation of the car, clutch in, in gear, observe move off or move off and release the handbrake at the same time but but that sequence is always the same if you get that sequence you must have a specific sequence you it work to work on sequences don't think about what do i have to do oh i've got to put in the clutch no that's not what you do you say okay i've got to prepare the car what's my sequence my sequence is Clutch in, select the right gear, put my hand on the handbrake, but don't release it. Observe all round, now release the handbrake and move off. Yeah, okay. There's a sequence. I forgot to put on the signal. Who, no, who, nobody saw that. I should have put on the signal after I did my observations. But, but that sequence, build yourself a little sequence, write it out, have a sequence. And then that helps you naturalize the driving much quicker because you use the same sequence when you move off, when you're at a traffic light, when you're at a stop sign, at your giveaway line, sequence is always the same. And then instead of thinking, oh, did I put the clutch in? Did I put it in the right gear? If you, if you have the sequence, you know, this follows that, follows that, follows that, and that makes life a lot easier. Okay, does that help? Yes, yes, thank you. Yeah, make little sequences for yourself. Like when you pull up on the side of the road, have a sequence. And the reason I say that, listen to this. This is this is where it, where you can fail. So you pull up on the side of the road and you've got a natural sequence. Your sequence is you stop the car. So you stop the car in place. You have a quick look around. Okay, that's fine. I don't need to move the car anymore. It's in the right place. Now what you do, the first thing you do is you make sure the handbrake is up. 
That's the first thing. Now it's left to right. Handbrake, out of gear or in park, signal off. Three things. That's your sequence when you've stopped. And every time you think the sequence. And what happens is your brain picks up the sequence. And afterwards, you don't have to think about it. You stop and you automatically put up the handbrake, take it out of gear, and you switch off the signal. But if you don't have the sequence, sequence when you're in the test, what happens is you might forget to put, take it out of gear. You might forget the handbrake. You might forget the signal. But if you've had the sequ sequence, if you have a sequence and you're teaching yourself sequences for what you're doing, then it makes the learning process for your subconscious a lot easier because your subconscious picks up the sequence and then just works through the sequence for you. And after a while, after a while, you've stopped. And I, I love doing this. After somebody has been driving for about 15 to 20 hours, they stop and then they're looking or I get them to look at something on the road. And then I say, you didn't put up your handbrake. And, and they have to look to see if they've put up their handbrake because they've naturally done the sequence. Do you understand, sally -Ann? Yes, I do. Thank you. All right, guys. So what we are going to be talking about this evening is traffic lights and traffic light traffic light clusters. Now, traffic lights sounds like, a, like okay, well, it's red, amber, and green, and that's it. No, well, it isn't. Um, traffic lights have some really specific things you need to consider when you're working with traffic lights. I want to ask, before we get to traffic lights, I want to ask a question, which is which is often an error in people's thinking. And let me share the screen quickly here with you, just for a quick share. Is there anybody here this evening who can tell me what this picture, and this picture comes from the, from the highway code. What is this picture highlighting? at this stage of the game. What is this? And this has to do with traffic lights as well. The driver will have to be patient for her to finish crossing before he makes the turn. Yes, yes, that is correct. And uh, that is correct, that is correct. But what happens to that junction when that woman is on the junction? What is, what is a good way of regarding it? Where that car, let's assume that car has stopped with its left signal on. It has to stop, okay? It has to stop. It cannot go in behind her until when? When is she, when is that car allowed to turn into that junction? Until the pedestrian has fully crossed the road. Yeah, the pedestrian must step off, be stepping off the, the surface of the road onto the pavement. That's when that car can enter the junction can't enter that junction unless that that crossing where that point from the one pavement to the other is clear before it can go into. So in actual fact, it turns that into a zebra crossing. Okay. Well done, Samuel. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Okay. The reason, the reason I brought this up, guys, the reason I brought this up was because a lot of people make the mistake in their drive, this is a common mistake in driving tests. When somebody is about to cross that road or is on the surface of the road you are turning into or you're going to be using, you need to be really careful with those pedestrians or buggies or cyclists or whatever, because that road does not, you are, you on the major road, there's a boundary line there, that single giveaway line on that picture is a boundary line. You are not allowed to cross that boundary line onto that surface of the road unless that junction is clear. There's nobody using it for crossing. Now, why do I mention that? When you get to a traffic light, you can have a similar situation and you need to be really careful with that as well. You've got to watch the, the pedestrians crossing when you say turning left at the traffic light. The trouble that you have though is you, you've also got to be moving into the junction and not unnecessarily stopping because then you'll be inviting them to cross and the other road users behind you are going to get a little bit upset. So in the, in the one sense, it's finding the balance. Finding the balance if the junction is clear enough that you can do your drive-through 
or at the traffic light, you must not unnecessarily stop because you'll be inviting pedestrians to use the junction against the red light because you don't have jaywalking in this country. It's not an offense to jaywalk in this country. Well, it is wrong, but it's not an offense. Whereas in America, you jaywalk, you get fined. Okay, jaywalking is walking out in front of a car. So that's that's different rules between us and America. It, well, if someone jaywalks in America, it doesn't give you the right to drive over them. That, that's not a good point anyway, and it's never good. I just want to warn you guys about that. Just be careful with that situation. You're coming up to a junction, and if you were turning right into this road, you would hold your right holding, you would hold your holding position in the center of the road, waiting to turn right until the junction is clear. Okay? All right. Okay, guys. Okay, let's go. So that was that. Now I want to share something else with you. So let's just talk about the, the traffic light sequence. So the, the traf traffic light sequence, okay, that's the, the traffic light. This, is, this depicts the traffic light sequence. And we start at red, and then we get red and amber, and then we get a green, and then we get amber, and then we go back and we get red again. So traffic light sequence, when you go facing three lights, normally you would have a red, red and amber together, green, and then an amber. Now, tell me, who knows? What is, everybody knows what red is. What does red and amber together mean? The second part of the sequence. Yeah, getting ready, preparing to go. Prepare to go. Yeah, that's right. It's it's a warning for you to be ready to go. You should have, your car should be in gear. And you can normally just start, find the clutch, find the bite and start moving off. Okay, that's what the red and amber is. And it's normally, it's not normally more than about two seconds, a second to two seconds. What does green mean? You can go. As long as it's safe, yeah. Remember that. As long as it's safe and it's clear, yeah. Yeah, you must go. Yeah. And the amber? Does that mean you must go faster? No, it, it doesn't. But if uh, if you are already if you have already passed, then you can continue going as long as the right side is clear. But if it's not, then you have to slow down. No, the amber the amber means Juliet. If you are if you are able to stop without endangering anybody, you must stop. That's what the amber means. Okay. So oh, right. the amber normally, when the amber comes up, when the amber will come on, it's it's going to it's telling you you should stop. But if you are in the junction or the you're coming in too fast and you and the car behind you is too close, you should look in your mirror, make sure it's safe for you to stop. Okay. Sure. All right. So so what we've got what we've got is basically the traffic light sequence and that thing. Now, I want to ask you a, a, another question. So I'm going to stop the share now. All right. So, so what is the next the next thing we need to think about on a traffic light? So you come up to a traffic light, and you are. I'm going to share this with you now. This is the next one. Now, what is it that at the end of the day? is the next thing you should know about a traffic light. But but the big thing is also to know whether it is individual lights. In other words, this lane of cars are going to go, and then that lane of cars are going to go, and then that lane and that. And that's four sequences. Whereas most traffic lights normally have two sequences. It means these cars can go, these cars opposite each other will go, and then those cars opposite each other will go. And this is out of the of the highway code, this image. Um, and you can clearly see here, these lights are red, and these lights are green. Now, here's the next question. Somebody, that car there is in the yellow box. Is, and why is he in the yellow box? And is he allowed to be in the yellow box? Who would like to answer that one for me? Vivian, I'm going to give you 
I'm going to give, allow you to talk. Vivian, tell me, why? what is that car doing in the yellow box? It's in the yellow box because it's turning right and it has already moved. It's just waiting for others to come to have a safe gap to turn right. Yeah, but is, is he allowed to be in the yellow box? Yeah, it's, well, only when he's turning right. Only when he's turning right is he allowed to be in the yellow box. Spot on, Vivian. Yeah. Boop it. That's brilliant, girl. Well done. Yes, that's good. Now, here's the next question. What is that car going to do when he turns when he turns right there? In this case, he's going to be facing a red light, isn't he? Does he stop or does he go? He has the, the green car. He's got his right signal on. And let's assume this traffic for coming on is clear. And he turns, and as he turns, he's going to be facing a red light. Does he stop or does he go? Oh, this one is a bit tricky, but I believe that since he's already there, it has to go. You're right. That red light is not for him. It's for the cars on this side over here. That red light is for the cars on this side of the, of the junction. That red light is not for him. And why can we say it's not for him? Do you know? Why it's not for him? Because I would say one is that he's already preparing to leave and he's not really coming from the other direction. Yeah, he's not behind this stop line. Vivian, the yeah. secret is, here's the secret. The secret is when he turns, there is no stop line between him and that red light. Can you see that? So if there's the red light, if I come down the post and I go along the ground, there is no stop line once he turns between him and that red light. Because there's no stop line between him and the red light, the red light is not for him. The red light is for this stop line on this side of the road. And here, the green light is for this stop line. So if you go down the post, there it hits the stop line. That's the green light. That green light there is not for any other thing except that stop line. Okay, so you always look at where the stop line is for, yeah? Michael, I have opened the, the mic for you, Michael. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have got a question, actually, regarding that. Okay, go um, What... If if you if you look at the opposite direction where the where the stop line where the stop line is, what is the significance of all the traffic lights opposite there? Because they can visibly see the first one, but what okay. is the significance of the second? Okay, so you it does introduce some le element of confusion, isn't it? Right for people that are not used to driving. No, in this it, it well it well it is when you think of it like that. But Michael, no, I'll tell you why not. If you think of this blue car here, over here, if this light was red, the guy sitting in that car wouldn't be able to see these two lights here. He'd have to look across the road to see what the light sequence is because he won't see these lights facing him, these two. They'll be above his windscreen. So the reason they put yeah. lights at the opposite side is so that you, if you're in the front of the queue, you can see. And if you're halfway across or this car here, this car here needs to know what that light is doing. Because once he's in the junction, he can't see any lights. He can see this light here. But if that light wasn't there for that stop light, he wouldn't know what's going on. And if he couldn't see that light, if that light wasn't there, he would have no idea whether the lights have changed or not. Because sometimes you have to know those lights have changed. These cars stop here so that you can get out of the junction. That's the reason you have lights on the opposite side of the road. I'm going to take this down for now, guys. I'm going to stop sharing there. So here, I'm going to show you something else at the moment, guys. And this is, this is a quite an important point. Now, now, one of the things you need to always, people don't always realize this, but this is quite an important point. When, when you look at where a traffic light is, and here's the traffic light. When you look at where the traffic light is, for that traffic light, this is the stop light. This is the stop light for that traffic light. And this is the stop line for that traffic light. 
the traffic light is always beyond the stop line. So if the traffic is coming down this road, the, the traffic light is never on the stop line. There's always a half a meter or, or a meter or five meters or 10 meters from the point where the traffic light is positioned to where the stop line is. That is a consistent. It is absolutely consistent. It is always like that. And if you go back to the picture we had just now, this is relevant to the question Michael asked as well. If you now look at that, look at this. This, this is a very accurate drawing. That traffic light for that van is there. And what he can see, the traffic light is beyond the stop line. There, the traffic light is beyond the stop line. Over here, once that, that car is there, that traffic light there will be for the stop line behind him and tells him that this traffic is going through. But when this car turns, there's no stop line in front of him on that red light. So for that red light's not for him. But it is for these guys because he has the stop line for that traffic light. That is critically important to know because sometimes what happens is they will put, once you turn, they put a stop line there with a traffic light for pedestrians to be able to cross. And it's it's within 10 or 20 meters. And then you have to obey the stop line. It's only if you know about that stop line. If they put a stop line here between this bollard and the pavement, and there was a stop line, then this car would have to obey that traffic light because of the stop line. Does everybody get that? Has anyone got a question about that? Because that's really important to understand. Okay, Michael, go for it. Yeah, uh, thanks. What, what I'm just going to say, if you're going to have the sort of layouts that you mentioned in a scenario where you put another um, stop line just yeah. before the um, or the traffic light opposite side, then yeah. you might need to remove the yellow box then. Because yeah. that means... Yes, yes, you're right. And but the, but normally that would that junction will be offset a bit so there's a space for one or two cars. I've I've seen that uh, in thing, and you're right about the yellow box will need to be removed. But what what you there's another rule that comes in here, Michael. If there is a line of if you are in this line turning right out of this lane, how many cars are allowed to cross? And we assume this is a two two-way traffic light. In other words, these cars are going to be running opposite each other, and those cars are going to be running together. And the lights will work for that. those cars there going left to right, and for these cars going up and down our, our image, going, going from the bottom of our image to the top of our image. So, so what we've got is, if, if we've got a situation where this car has to turn right, he can now see what's happening and he'll know that when that light in front of him goes red, these cars have been stopped because these lights here will be red and the people need to stop behind that. So he can time his way through the junction, right? The, the, problem, the problem arises when there is an offset and further down the road, there's another stop line. And, that, and then that might be a pedestrian crossing, which is integrated with the lights. But how many cars are allowed to enter to turn right before you have to wait behind this line if you're turning right, even if the light is green? Do you know how many cars? Michael, do you want to try that? Answer that? Yeah, I think about two or three. I don't know the exact number because you don't want to block. You don't you're want to form an obstruction. Absolutely right, Michael. You had the right yeah, number. If you are car number three wanting to turn right, in a such scenario like this, if you are car number three wanting to turn right, you should not go into the junction to turn right unless you are car number one or car number two. If you are car number one or number two, you go into the junction and you wait to turn right. But if you are car number three, you must wait behind the stop line. If the other cars, if there's no oncoming traffic and they can clear and it's still green, then you can go in to turn right. But otherwise, you wait for the next sequence on the on the on the cycle. That is, an absolutely a given. 
sometimes you have you what what are you going to know if these lights here if this set of lights here are four little lights and not three what is it telling you exactly that, that would be a scenario where you have a filter light that that's you... exactly correct that is the scenario where you have a filter light that is exactly brilliant yes if you look at that and you've got a full green it means you can go left, right, straight, or turn right against the oncoming traffic as long as it's safe to do so. But if there's a fourth light either set off to the right or underneath, which is which you can't see because it's not on yet, then invariably that will be a filter light that comes on to allow you to turn right. And that's really good to understand. If you look at those traffic lights, make sure that you what are you facing? Three lights or four lights? If you're turning right. So mm -hmm. from what we've done now, we've studied where the stop line is in relation, in relation to the traffic to to the traffic lights. It's always closer to you. If there's a stop line between you and the light, then the light is for you. You need to take note of what the light says. Coming up to a junction where there's a traffic light, find the stop line. If you're coming up to a junction where there are where there are pedestrians for pedestrian crossing, find the stop line. The stop line for the for the for the pedestrian crossing will also be closer to you than the actual traffic line. Okay, that's number one. Number two, how, is this a four-way junction where each set of lights works independently, or is it a two-way? And sometimes you get a three-way where maybe the lights on the left and right will work independently, but the cars going through the junction will be going, going across the junction, will be going together. You're allowed to enter the box junction as long as you are turning right, and you should enter it to wait to turn right. If there are four lights ahead of you, if there are four possible traffic lights on the post ahead of you, and you're facing a full green, then invariably the other light that will come on will give you a filter. And at that stage, you check that there's no oncoming traffic because it will have been stopped and you'll be able to turn. All right, guys. So now we've, we've basically covered most of the things. I'm just going to share some images with you quickly. Um, and then let's see who would like to answer this next question. Let me just unshare and share again. Okay, now, I want you to... I want, I, I would love somebody to give me, and this is a 10 pound giveaway. Here we are. This is a 10 pound giveaway. Three things. I'm looking for three things. Okay. So I'm looking for uh, four things. I'm going to give them to you now. All right. So the first thing I want to know is what, what is, what, what are the, what are, are these lights telling you you can do right now? And how many is the minimum number of lanes that will be able to face this traffic light? You need to get those questions right. So first of all, what are those traffic lights telling you? What are you seeing there? What, what is this telling you? And, and those lights are for the same junction, the same stop line. You've got one stop line across the road and it's for the same. And what is the minimum number of lanes you will have at this light, the minimum number of lanes, and what is this traffic light telling you? Okay, Undunga, you had your you had your hand up first, so go for it. Do you want me to ask the questions, and you can answer them one by one? Do you want to start with lanes? How many lanes are there? Oh, um, there may be minimum, three lanes. How many? Three lanes. All right, that's your first answer. Okay. And what is this traffic light telling you? The green one is you can go straight and you can as well turn left. Yes. And the other one, you have to stop. I think it's four lane. I think it's four lane. Uh -huh. Two lane on each. Yeah. So the one on red, you have to wait. And the other green one, you can go straight okay. and turn right, and you can do a U-turn. Okay. You can't do a U-turn. You can go straight. You can or turn, turn left. Go straight or turn left and turn right. Yes. 
No. No, you can't turn right. It's you can't turn only right. left. Yeah. Sure. Okay. All right. So, okay, that's fine. Okay, I'm just going to leave it there. And what can you not do at this juncture? You can't do a U-turn and you can't turn right. Yeah, those two things are correct. Okay. I'm going to hold that, Undungu. You've got, you've got, you've got, you've got one answer wrong at the moment. One answer wrong at the moment. Okay, I'm going to ask somebody else. Thank you for participating, Ndungu. Vivian, you've got your hand up. Do you want to talk? Do you want to give me the answer here? Give me the answers. So from what I observe, I think it's three lanes that are there. Yeah. One lane is going left. The other one... Okay, it's either three or two lanes, sorry. One lane is going left. Okay, so let me repeat the question. What okay. is the minimum number of lanes you can have on this traffic line? Minimum is two. Yes, that's correct. Yes. That's what Undungu got wrong. All right, now let's see yeah. get the rest of the things. Can I turn right? Mm? Can I turn right at this traffic line? No, you can't because this right, the right side is showing that you have to stop for the red lights. Okay, can I go the, straight? Yeah, you can go straight. Can I turn left? Yeah, you can turn left. Okay, and I'm allowed to do a quick wheelie, or a wheelie with my handbrake and turn around. No, you can't because of the sign. The oh, really? sign. Uh, yeah. no, you no. can't. Terrible, that is absolutely terrible. <laughs> Okay, Vivian, Ndungu unfortunately got the line, the number of lines wrong. Ndungu, thank you for participating. But I think for taking part and for giving us the right answers, I think both of you have earned your 10 your ten pound gift vouchers. Oh, thank you. Thank we you. We are going to be kind to Ndungu because she was the first one. She gave everybody else the, the other answers. But you got yeah. the two lines. Yes, this is... This is Thank great. You. Thank you, Vivian. Thank you very much. Thank, yeah. you. Thank you. All right, guys. No, so this is a this is the interesting thing about this set of lights is basically when the green comes on, as long as you are going straight, you'd be in the left hand lane because the right hand lane will be a right turn only. It it might be a right turn and a go straight because it, it, you just have to wait until your turn until the other cars start to turn right to be able to go but invariably the right hand lane facing this traffic light will be right turn only and the minimum number of lanes here is two because the green the the go left and uh, if the go left comes on by itself then it has to be three lanes but you don't know that a minimum number of lanes this traffic light can serve is two because the people turning left and going straight will not interfere with each other so um, in a way, Ndungu was also right because she said it has to be three lanes. Well, we don't know <coughs> whether, whether the left, the going left lane is a filter error. And that will mean that the left-hand lane is marked left turn only. And the center lane can be marked left turn or straight ahead or invariably straight ahead. And then the right the right hand lane will be mostly just turn right and nothing else will be a right arrow on the ground. Okay, guys, I'm hoping, really hoping, I'm gonna wrap that up now. Michael, how many of my video webinars have you attended? Right, um, quite a few. Um, I've watched your video because you actually provided access to us for three months and Actually, uh, a bit of a news to announce today. Today, I actually passed my driving test. Okay. I got my driving license today. Wow, <laughs> brilliant. Yeah, so your video was one of those materials that I actually used. Okay. Um, yeah, today, this morning, at my local um, driving test center. Oh, Michael, amazing. Absolutely time. amazing. Yeah. Um, so really delighted. But I'll continue to join your webinar because I always learn. Okay. Um, well, well, Michael, um, you yeah. must contact us so that we can we can um, work out. You can always, for promotion purposes, if you if you've got people who you'd like to introduce and so on, sure. we can Definitely. we can we can always um, we we have what we call a 
the referral program process uh, where people mm. can say, okay, I'm going to refer some friends for courses and things like that. And you, you get uh, participation funds for that. Michael, I am so glad to hear that. Really, yeah. really glad yeah. to hear that. But would you, would, let me ask you a question, Michael. <laughs> I'm glad. Would you say, would you say that having watched the videos and having participated in the webinars made made new information available for you? Would you say that? Yes, absolutely. Um, I always learn new I always, you know, um, learn new information from you. Um, even sometimes much more than my driving instructor. Okay. And it's the reason why I, I decided that I will continue to join. Uh, my missus was asking me, so now that you're past, are you going to join your webinar on Thursday? I said, yeah, absolutely. Chris is the, the fountain of knowledge. There's all this new information from Chris. Um, that was always going to be very useful for me. So, and that's why I joined. And, yeah. and I thought um, it's, it's also... Great, great. Michael. Sorry, I'm just getting distracted by my son. Yeah, yeah so, and, and, um, and Michael, you know what? Your questions mm. have been very challenging sometimes, and I've enjoyed them. That's good. I like the challenging mm. questions. It was no, good. I just said uh, sometimes, you know, um, some of these things, uh, you just you just have to need, you need to understand them. Because what I tend to notice with a lot of people that have been driving for a long time, they know the, the what the what the rules are, but they don't understand why there is why in place. And yeah. this is what I wanted to learn. And that's the reason why I often like to join your webinar because you go into giving those background information. Your driving instructor doesn't have all that time to do it because he needs to do the learning part on the road. But if you get this background put into the actual opportunity he gives you to drive, it really makes a, a good synergy. It becomes a, a, a really solid foundation with a brilliant building. Mm. Yeah, that's that's yeah. Why. Um, yeah, I think that again when I joined, what I heard you talking about sequencing. It, that was really really important because this is what I actually used to master the uh, parallel parking. Yeah, and terms of the sequence of the step, all the things I needed to do, and lo and behold, that well, that was one of the maneuver uh, maneuver I had to do today. Okay, and it's that's really really important. So I have to formalize the sequence in my mind. Then yeah. it was a lot easier for me to set up implement actually yeah. when I was required to do them. So yeah. yeah, I think I completely agree with that theory of having a sequencing, trying to formalize it repetitively in your mind and it becomes very subconscious and it's a lot easier for you to um, implement. Okay, brilliant, Michael. Thank you so much. Thank you for your participation and please, you're welcome all the time. Yeah, and give us a call. Yeah, I'm, I'm always going to be around. There's always a lot to learn from you. <laughs> and our questions that I might need to... I think it's a lot easier for me to ask you questions as I ask my driving instructor. It's going to charge me. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, no, no, this is, yeah, this is, this is, you've been here long enough. You, you feel like an old friend now, Michael. Thank you so much for that. Really right, appreciate you. it. Thank yeah. you so much. Yes. Thanks, Jess. Yes. Congratulations to Michael. Brilliant stuff. I'm glad about that. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. That was a lovely evening. Brilliant interaction there from everyone. And um, all of you guys, uh, stay safe until we meet again. And, and please, if any of you need access, any of you attended tonight need access to our BDSL online, please, you're welcome to do that. Get onto that and study those videos we've got there. They're really worth watching. Okay, guys, have a good evening and stay safe. Thank you very much.